Hi, uh, this is Amit Kirti here. In this uh, video, I would like to talk about insertion sort algorithm. So the items for discussion will be insertion sort algorithm introduction, insertion sort algorithm example, insertion sort algorithm itself. We will analyze the insertion sort algorithm using the same example. And then we will see the time complexity for insertion sort algorithm. Now insertion sort algorithm is, a, is part of or categorized as a decrease and conquer algorithm and it sorts one element at a time. We will see more when we look at an example for this. It is more efficient algorithm compared to brute force algorithms like bubble sort and selection sort. However, it is but the performance is not as good as other efficient algorithms like merge sort and quick sort when the data set is huge. So it is actually a midway uh, algorithm compared to bubble sort, merge sort and uh, so it, it performs midway between these two algorithms. Sometimes merge sort actually uses insertion sort when the data set is small and it uses merge sort when the data set is huge. Now DL shell improved the insertion sort algorithm and called it as shell sort. Shell sort. So shell sort is actually an, an improved version of insertion sort. Now let's try to look at an example of how insertion sort works. So if you see the numbers here that are being shown, we see a vertical bar and the elements on the left hand side of the vertical bar are sorted and the elements on the right hand side of the vertical bar are all unsorted. So in this case, since it is a first element, it is actually considered as sorted and the elements on the right are unsorted. Now insertion sort tries to place the element immediately to the right of the bar in its appropriate position on the left hand side. That is, it will shift the elements which are sorted and place this element in the sorted list. So currently, there is only one element 89. So first we will save 45 and keep it aside and push 89 to the right. And then since there are no other elements left, 45 will go and sit in its position. So we have two elements which are already sorted 45 and 89 and the elements on the right hand side of the vertical bar are not sorted. So now let's pick the element that is not sorted and which is immediate to the right of the vertical bar which is 68 and try to place this in its appropriate position inside the left hand side of the vertical bar which contains sorted elements. So first we will make a copy of 68 and keep it aside then we will move 89 to the right because it is greater than 68 and since 68 uh, sorry less than uh, 68 uh, and then since 68 is greater than 45 we will move 68 to its appropriate position and then move the bar ahead. So the elements to the left hand side of the bar that is 45, 68 and 89 are sorted and elements on the right hand side are not sorted. So next element is 90. So we'll make a copy of 90. And then when we compare 90 with 89, we realize that 90 is greater than 89. So 90 can't be put anywhere in this list. It has to stay where it is. So it will come back and sit where it is and we'll move the bar ahead. So to the left side of this bar, we have the elements that are already sorted. And to the right of the bar, we have elements that are not sorted. So next, it's 29's turn to go and sit in its position. So first we'll make a copy of 29 and we realize that 90 is greater than 29. So move 90 to the right. Then we see 89 is also greater than 29. So 89 moves to the right and 68 is greater than 29. So 68 also moves to the right and 45 is also greater than 29. So 45 also moves to the right and 29 goes and sits in its position. So by this round, we have all these elements already sorted to the left of the bar and the only element left is 34. 
So what we do is we make a copy of 34 and we realize that 90 is greater than 34. So push 90 to the right. 89 is greater than 34. So push 89 to the right. Then 68 is greater than 34. So push 68 to the right. 45 is greater than 34. So push 45 to the right. And 29 is less than 34. So we have found out a position for 34. So 34 will go and sit in its position and the bar moves to the right. So insertion sort inserts the elements in its appropriate position. Now let's try to look at the algorithm for insertion sort. You will see that there is one for loop, outer for loop and there is one inner while loop. Now the outer for loop is to iterate through all the elements that are not sorted and the inner while loop is to push the elements to the right and ensure that the next unsorted element is placed in its position. So the while loop is there to push the elements to the right and the for loop is to iterate through all the unsorted elements. So for example, if I take these, 4 is already sorted in its position. Now 3 needs to be put in its place. So this while loop will actually copy the elements to which are on the left hand side which are sorted and push it to right side. So in this case, it will copy 4 in, to, in the position where 3 is there right now. So 4 moves to the right and then 3 goes and sits in its position. So this while loop ensures that we push the elements and then this last statement copies 3 into this position. So this is how it would look after the first iteration. Then we go ahead and increment for loop and then we will store the next element that is 2 inside this variable called v. And then in this while loop we will copy the a of j, a j element to a of j plus 1. So 4 will be copied to the next element, 3 will be copied to the next element and then in this position that is first position we will copy the element 2. So 2 goes and sits here, 3 and 4 have been shifted to the right. So the elements on the left hand side of this vertical bar have been sorted and the only element left is the element on the right hand side of the vertical bar which is 1. So when we go up in the for loop, we will copy 1 into a temporary variable v and then in this while loop, I will shift 4 to the right, then 3 to the right, then 2 to the right and since all elements have been shifted to the right, I will come out of the while loop and copy the element 1 which I had stored in v into a of j plus 1. So 1 will go and sit in this position. So this is how it would look after all the iterations. So we have the elements in sorted order. So insertion sort algorithm has a for loop and a while loop. Now let's try to look at the time complexity for insertion sort. Now the worst case for insertion sort will be when the elements are in descending order. So in this example, you will see that we have taken 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So what actually happens is when 9 is, though 9 is sorted and put in its place, when we compare 9 and 8, we see that, we see that 8 is smaller. So 9 has to be pushed to the right to accommodate 8 in its position. Then we have 7 to sort. So we push 9 and 8 to the right so that we can accommodate 7 in first position. Then when we take 6, then 9, 8 and 7 have to be pushed to the right so that 6 can sit in its position. Then when we have 5, we have to push 9, 8, 7 and 6 to the right so that 5 gets goes and sits in its position. So the while loop executes completely for each element to push all the elements to the right and the outer for loop goes through each of the elements. So since the while loop is executed completely and the for loop is also executed completely, we the complexity actually turns out to be theta of n square in worst case scenario. In best case scenario, we have the elements already in the sorted order. 
For example, here we see that 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are already sorted and we, when we run insertion sort on this algorithm, it actually goes as below. First it will check 5, since 5 is already sorted, it doesn't do anything. Then it takes 6, since 6 is greater than 5, it doesn't do anything in the while loop. Then it checks the next element 7, since 7 is greater than 6, again it doesn't do anything in the while loop. Then it goes and checks 8 and then subsequently 9. So what actually happens is only the outer for loop goes through each of these elements till the end of the list whereas the inner while loop does not shift any elements. So in case of best case we only have the outer for loop executing whereas the inner while loop does not ex execute. So the complexity actually turns out to be theta of n. So in worst case, we have a complexity of theta of n square and in the best case, we have a complexity of theta of n. So, so this is the reason why it is better than bubble sort and selection sort because irrespective of whether the elements are sorted or unsorted, bubble sort actually gives you a complexity of theta of n square. Whereas insertion sort can give you anywhere between theta of n to theta of n square based on the type of elements. So this is insertion sort. Thanks for watching the video.